Welcome to Racks Infotech, guys. Uh, in this video, we are going to discuss about the data guard entry questions. Oracle data guard entry questions. Uh, very few of them we are going to discuss. And the next part are uh, another two to three parts. We are going to discuss complete Oracle data guard entry questions. Okay. First one, uh, first question. Why we need to enable force logging option in data guard environment? Very frequently, we used to get this question, right? Uh, most of the interviewers, they used to ask. So as part of the data guard uh, setup on primary side and standby side, we are going to enable one of the parameter where we need to enable the force logging. So that is the question, why we need to. The force logging option is the fastest or safest method to ensure that all the changes made in the database we will capture and available for the recovery in the redo logs. If you enable the force logging, whatever the transactions, whatever the information create inside updates, whatever it is happens, those will stored into your redo logs. Otherwise, it, it's supposed to, the general feature or functionalities, it is going to store into your data files. But if you enable the force logging, that will store into your redo log files for recovery purpose, pre store and recovery purpose. That is the that is why we are going to enable the force logging. If you want to go through it, you can go through a complete information theoretically. High level is to capture all the information in your redo log files. If it is not enabled, it won't store into your redo log files. That is the only thing. Okay, how we are going to, uh, that is another question if they will ask, can we enable the force logging in uh, database level or uh, table space level? We can do both the ways. If you want to enable the force logging mode, database level you can use alter database force logging or if you want to use uh, enable the force logging in table space level that we can do it and disable also we can do it no force logging option okay this functionality has been introduced oracle 9i release 2 onwards before 9i release 2 version we don't have this functionality or feature okay and one more thing if you enable the force logging your database uh, performance will be slightly degraded. So there is a performance impact if you enable the force logging option. So these two the uh, views, how we are going to check whether force logging is enabled or not enabled. If it is enabled, if it is enabled on database level or table space level, we can able to query these two views by using. By using these two views, we can able to get that information. Okay, go through this theoretical part mostly, but high level, uh, we have covered that. It's very, very important, guys. Okay, most of the interviews as part of the data guard, they will ask you this question. Okay, next question. What is the difference between logging and non-logging in Oracle? In Oracle databases, we have two options. One is logging option, another one is no logging. Logging means, the, I mean, whatever the objects is created, okay? If you have specified it's a logging mode, then the creation of the database objects as well as the subsequent inserts into, I mean, whatever the inserts, okay, you are going to insert some data that is going to object level, okay. We logged into the redo log file, whatever the information which is stored into that, we will be, it will be the information, whatever you have inserted, that will be uh, recorded into your redo log file. If you specify no logging means, the creation of the database objects as well as the subsequent conversion of inserts will be logged in a redo log file. Okay, this is the only one thing uh, which we can. So, for highly, I mean, uh, briefing, high level briefing or high level thing, logging is generating the redo data during the index or table updates or inserts on the deletes. If anything happen, it is going to generate in your redo. Like your redo will be increased more if it is a login option is enabled. Okay, by default, it's a no logging. Okay, or your table space or your database is not in a low, no logging mode. Then your redo will be not generated high as part of your index or tables, updates, inserts or deletes happens. So for no logging, you will get a better performance. Okay, but recovery is very typical or difficulty if you your database or table space in log no logging mode. But in case of logging mode, uh, you can able to recover the things because uh, the data will be there in your redo. So redos will help us recovery purpose, right? That's where the performance will be slightly degraded if your database or table space is uh, enabled in logging mode. That's where it's a very, very high level if you want to see it. Okay, next question. How many standby logs need to be created? Okay, how many standby 
redo logs and log files are required. Redo logs needed to be created as part of your standby build. Okay, that is one question. How many redo log files are standby redo logs is required as part of your uh, this thing, DI configuration? Suppose you have three redo log files in your primary side. So that primary side you have number, you can thought about number is three, n equal to three. But how many redo log files, standby redo log files you required? You required n plus one anytime. If when you are going to in, create a standby database, three plus one. So total four standby redo logs you required. So three is primary site, four is for your standby redo log files. That is the answer. And what, what should be the size? We have created four redo log files, but can I use like my, these are primary site, primary site, I have three redo log groups, redo log files with 100 MB with each file, okay? Each read log file is with 100 MB. But in standby side, let me write it here. Standby side, we need four standby read log files, read log files. Okay. That's okay. So four required. So N plus one we required. And size each redo log file is equal to or more of the size equals to your redo log file 100 MB minimum 100 MB you have to create each file. So the standby redo log must be exactly the same size of your online redo logs that you can give it even if you can make it more also uh, we may get somewhere like uh, conflicts but yeah as per the standards you can make it the same size like each redo log file of your primary is 100 MB or if it is a 50 MB, you can create four standby redo logs with the size of 50 MB, 50, 50, 50, 50 200 MB you can create. So standby redo log files uh, must be exactly the same size of your online redo log files. If it is less size of your less size compared to your uh, uh, primary redo log files, there is an issue with the conflicts. Okay, it should be same as your primary redo log files. Next question, explain different protection modes in your data guard. How many types of protection modes are different types of protection modes in your data guard? Very uh, frequently we used to get this question into this, right? Majorly we have three protection modes, okay? That is maximum protection, maximum availability, maximum performance. This is a default one. Maximum performance is default protection mode in your uh, data guard setup, okay? This is in redo transport is in async mode okay async mode so we will talk about that later but remaining these two maximum protection and maximum availability the redo transport mode is sync mode sync mode oh this is the default one maximum performance is the default mode that's where if you want to go through it most like explain each and every uh, protection mode somebody will ask you right so maximum protection and maximum availability, zero data loss is guaranteed. There is no data we are going to loss about this maximum protection or maximum availability modes. But in case of maximum performance, uh, minimal, very minimal data loss uh, we may expect. Okay, that is where it is. These two are required the acknowledgement for each and every redo transport. But here it is not, never expect acknowledgement from the standby database. That's where the performance is maximum. So you can go through these things. These two are expecting uh, the acknowledgement. If the acknowledgement is not received from the standby database to the primary, the transactions which are there on primary side, those will not commit. That is the difference, okay? Uh, if you want individually, you can go through it maximum protection. It will do this. The protection mode guarantees that no data loss occurs in the primary database is fail. Okay. And then maximum availability. It works similar to your protection mode, but the primary database does not shut down if the redo is not shipped. But in case of maximum protection, if the redo is not copied or the standby database is not sent the acknowledgement to the primary site, the primary will be shut it down. That is the one, like protection will be there. 
but in case of availability the database will not be shut it down that uh, apart from that it will wait for the acknowledgement and the primary database operates unsynchronized mode until the fault is correct and all the gaps in the redo log files are resolved it will convert it to your uh, um, make it as a performance mode or an unacknowledged option it is going to change it but in case of maximum performance it's a default uh, protection mode this will allow a transaction to commit asap the redo data need to recover the transaction in return to your local online redo log files so it won't expect for the acknowledgement and another question what is mean by switch over in your data like we have two kind of activities one is switch over activity another one is failover activity they will ask like as part of the interviews you will get what is mean by the switch over activity what is mean by the failover activity high level switch over is a planned activity we are intentionally changing our primary we used to have uh, two databases the primary database and this is our standby database this is the p and this is the standby if you want to convert your primary database as a standby or, or else this standby act as a primary this is switch over we are intentionally planned this activity okay primary becomes standby standby becomes primary it's going to switch over the roles role of the database oracle data guide helps you change the role of the database between the primary and standby using either switch over or failover operation but switch over is a planned activity that's where we have mentioned it here you can go through this theory part switch over is planned activity but in case of failover what is mean by the failover activity it is unplanned activity so you have uh, primary and standby due to some issues the primary and standby both are in sync okay due to some issue your production has been shut it down some network issue or power outage or something the standby immediately act as a primary this we call it as a failover activity it's failed okay then this becomes primary standby becomes primary that we need to enable it we can do manually we need to do this or by using dg mgrl data guard broker okay data guard broker the setup if you have enabled we can do it very simply once simple command so failover is a unplanned activity so failure is a role transition in which one of the standby database is transitioned, transitioned to the primary role after the primary database instance in case of fails. The primary instance is failed or unreachable. In that scenario, the failover will be happened. So it is an unplanned activity. So you can go through it. It may not result the data loss depending on the production modes and other things. And the thing, next question is verifying flashback and converting snapshot standby simply like whether your database is enabled the flashback or not how we are going to check it and how to convert your uh, physical standby database to snapshot standby database we have different types of standby database question also in upcoming uh, sessions i will go through it and then i'll explain different types of standby databases so first check how we have enabled like whether flashback is enabled or not how we are going to check it First, you can connect DGMGRL. This is a broker, DG broker enabled. DGMGRL is the command to check and then connect it to your sys user. Edit database set state to apply and convert your database to snap physical standby database to snapshot standby. How we are going to convert? Like so, if you want to do the snapshot convert, like if you want to do the physical standby to snapshot standby, your flashback should be enabled okay flashback should be on then only we can do this convert the snapshot standby back to physical standby how we are going to convert this one is your physical standby to snapshot standby single command once uh, you have some planned activity if you make it your snapshot standby it is in read write mode and you did that and then you want to plan to roll back this like snapshot standby to physical standby how you are going to convert it by using convert database database name to physical standby very simple right so in this way we are going to convert your physical standby to snapshot and snapshot standby database to physical standby database yeah that's all uh, about in this video and upcoming videos we are going to see more uh, question and answers if you are uh, yet to subscribe our channel you can see it like tracks infotech 
uh, we are going to provide online trainings for Oracle DBA, RAC DBA, and OCIs. And also, we are going to announce uh, free Oracle RAC DBA training sessions soon. Okay, thank you. Have a good day.